Finally tonight, an economic story that's not about the recession. It's the amazing success story of a board game that's sweeping the nation. In a matter of months, it's turned three amateur know-it-alls into millionaire trivia barons. By word of mouth alone, the game Trivial Pursuit has already sold 100,000 copies in Canada. If you went out tomorrow, you might be hard-pressed to find one in the stores. That's how successful the game has become. Fred Langan reports. What sport did Leo Seltzer develop from the dance marathons and walkathons of the 1920s and 30s? I, I don't know. <laughs> Roller derby. You. Oh. oh right. oh, 6,000 questions, all filled with useless tidbits of information. That's what has made Trivial Pursuit the surprise hit of the game's world. Beer today, champagne tomorrow, for the unlikely entrepreneurs who thought up the game. Chris Haney and Scott Abbott, two ex-newsmen, and John Haney, a former hockey player and theater manager. It began three years ago with a question. 15th of December, 1979. Right, the 40th anniversary of uh, the world premiere of Gone with the Wind, as we've since found out. And uh, I bought my sixth Scrabble game because he challenged me to, uh, to a game I couldn't find it. And I said, you know, that's the sixth one I bought. Why don't we invent a game? And you said... No, you said... I said... What could it be about? No, first I said, why don't we invent a game? You've said that already. Oh, and you said, what could it be about? No, you said... And I said, said that, and you and said... I said... Trivia? Trivia. <laughs> okay. Playing it is easy. Roll the dice, land on a colored square, and answer a question in one of six categories. For example, yellow is history. What Norwegian was the United Nations first secretary general? Dog Hammerschild. Schild. No, no, no. Trig V. Lee. Oh! Uh, Thor hired him. Oh. <laughs> Trig V. Lee. Everybody knows that. Dag Hammarskjöld was Who's Swedish. Trig, wasn't Trig V. Lee was the first Secretary General of the United Nations, and I think any newsman worth his salt should know that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Here goes the UN beat. Like the unemployed plumber who invented Monopoly, or the plastic sculptor who made the first hula hoop, the boys knew they had a winner. But it took two lean years to write the questions, churn out the first samples, and find a banker who would buy the idea. We had some rocky times last spring after the trade shows, and we didn't get very many orders, and uh, getting financing together. And really, it was only through the help of a bank manager in St. Catharines, Ontario, who uh, played the game and believed in it. And he was sort of the last bank we went to. Since then, there's only been one real problem, they can't make the games fast enough. With 1,000 multicolored cards per box, it's a complicated production run. All the parts, except the dice, are designed, manufactured, and assembled in Canada. This assembly line is turning out an average of 3,500 games a day. As fast as they can be shipped to the stores, they're sold out. The manufacturer is having trouble keeping up with the demand for a game that's so popular, it's outselling the all-time favorite, Monopoly. Stu Robertson, the distributor, thinks he has died and gone to heaven. Two years ago, he left Parker Brothers, the monopoly giant, to buy into a small Canadian firm. Voila, a winner. Financially, it's, uh, it's leapt up to being probably in this fiscal year, about 20% of our total sales will have been the trivial pursuit we shipped. And it's terribly important for the retail industry in the, in the toy and game business this year because it's one of the few things that is drawing people into their stores. At this store on a pre-Christmas Saturday, copies of the game have been held back so the inventors can sign them. At $30 a crack, the game isn't cheap. At $30 a crack, it will be out of stock in a day or so. According to the inventors, this is the beginning of a trivia empire. There's already a second set of questions on the movies to be followed by sports, baby boom quiz, and a children's edition. They hope for a lucrative string of spin-offs. All this is just in Canada. Next month, Trivial Pursuit invades the United States with the richest royalty contract in the history of the games business. E.T. is number two. Like it says on the box, what mighty contests rise from trivial things. Who said that, Fred? Fred Langan for The Journal.